Hello, hello, I'm Kara from Pagan Crafting. Today I have something very cool. I know I always say I have something very cool, but today I have something very, very, very special. We're doing an art magic spell collaboration between content creators. This one is very cool. There's about five of us here that are together that are working towards a very cool art magic spell with the theme of healing and connection. Now the theme of healing and connection is up to the individual uh, creator uh, the witch to determine how it personally relates to them and how they want to put that into the spell. Now there's four ingredients that also go into the spell and each witch can also interpret that however they see fit as well. I'm going to introduce you to the other uh, content creators here in just a moment and in the description down below you'll be able to see a link to their uh, channel and you'll be able to find all their videos too. videos too. So, so the first ingredient is show off the magical side of you. You may represent your magical practice through however you choose in your art magical spell. And number two is pick any type of container. So that could be glass, fiber, metal, canvas, furniture, anything, anything how you see fit to rock your art magic spell in. Number three, we have something to represent the land that you're from. So the country or region to represent in your artwork, express your love, respect, and connection that you have to your country or your land that you, that you love. And number four, the last one is choose colors that correspond to how you feel with your healing and connection spell. So we are very excited and none of us know what we're doing yet. So it'll be cool to see how everyone has interpreted these ingredients and the theme for the Art Magic Spell collaboration. So join me as we have some fun today. I'm gonna to show you how I made my Art Magic Spell with a little poetry for a spell on top of it. And uh, join us today as we create some healing and connection after this world has had some traumas this past couple years. Hello Shamai, I'm Jessica. I'm an astrologer and folk witch living and crafting on my ancestral homeland of South Wales in the UK. My craft is mainly rooted in the land where I live and focusing on understanding and living in tune with the seasonal cycles and ebbs and flows with a big dose of creativity and art magic thrown in. I have a YouTube channel, Jessica and the Moon, where I share about my personal path and also tarot and journaling, lots of journaling because that kind of practical organization is very important to me, living a practical, everyday magical life. Hello, my name is Amy and I'm the art witch of magical crafting. For this Art Witch collaboration, I'll be crafting a magical bee house and adding some spell work along the way. Let's do some magical crafting. Hi, my name is Aurora from Lavender Hazelwood Witches. I do a lot of green hedge and really hearth witchery, I guess. And I've also been traveling the priestess path with her mystery school, and I am especially drawn to our animal creature friends. <sighs> I'm excited because Amy from Magical Crafting and I, since we're in the same part of the world, we've decided to collaborate in this collaboration and both do some workings around our pollinators and helping them out. So we are going to take a trip into the garden. Hey everyone, I'm the Witchling. I am an archaeologist and an artist and of course a witch. Humans doing art has been as odd as humanity itself. Honestly, it's like breathing for humans. So everybody can do art. Everyone can do art and everybody should. And I'm trying to teach you to bring more art into your life and into your craft. For my art magic spell, I chose to design a magical lantern to show the magical side of me. The lantern is made of wood to show the four generations of woodworker that resides within me on my father's side. I chose to use the crystals to show the four generations of the magical holistic healer of the feminine, my mother's side of me. I chose the colors of aquamarine, various colors, royal blue to browns. Uh, those colors to me of healing, grounding and connection. To me, they represent the land that I'm from, Alberta, Canada, from the forest to the deserts, but the mountains are most inspiring to me, and that's which I chose to paint 
on my lantern. They hold great power and magic within my heart. And I'll show you my inspiration with the spell poem to show you how I made my art spell magical lantern. Let this spell poem be a healing and connection that has lighted the way of a magical lantern. In the darkest of nights where shadows creep, a lantern's glow guiding us deep. Through the labyrinth of wounds where the spirits sway, a healing connection shall light our way. Within the tender touch of our hands entwined, a web of solace woven, our hearts aligned. Through the sorrow soften and pain caress, a healing connection, our souls blessed. The Latin flickers with whispers of grace and ancient scars unravel to find their peaceful place. Together we march, hearts ablaze and strong, healing and connection where we belong. Like puzzle pieces, we seemly fit the lantern's beam, the breaking darkness grip. The unity we stand, our spirits reborn, healing connection forever sworn. Through triumphs and trail trials will bring forth and dawn, lighting the path where despair is withdrawn. With every embrace, with every word spoken, healing and connection shall not be broken. So let us gather like the stars in the sky, carry the lantern, let the light multiply. For together we're stronger and our love impervious, healing and connection forever victorious. In this journey of life, we illuminate the healing wounds that anguish did create. With lantern in hand, we rise anew, healing and connection guiding us through. I start my project in my wee backyard. I prepare my lumber for my new magical art piece. I start off with it cutting down to size. This will become the base and the roof of my magical lantern. Now next what I'm going to do is I'm routering the edges to create a nice finished edge around it just to give it that little bit of punch out there. After I've routed all the edges there's going to be a lot of sanding. A lot of sanding to get those little tail feathers off and just to smooth it out so it'll take the paint nice. Next we're going to be drilling in the doweling bits, the holes of the dowling, so we're going to look at what fits best. Great way to measurement, little trick there, little hack. And that way your drill bit matches up. So what I've done here with this piece of plywood, I've routed out the first piece, the bottom on both sides, and then the top one here, I've left the bottom side blank, or just flat, sorry. So I'm going to use this piece here for the bottom and this one here is going to be one of the layers for the top piece. So I'm going to mark out where the best spot is to drill these into. Next time I'm probably going to leave another uh, quarter of an inch inwards and just lose that space. I'd rather that because it was splitting near the edges. Mark off the best place that you see fit for you where you'd like to mark your holes for your dowlings. I would actually pull it back another quarter of an inch from where I marked it originally. It was a little close to the edges and it frayed a little bit. This is a nice little drawer pull opener. I grabbed that on Amazon. And this piece I'm hanging on to is actually the top of a fence post. Super cheap, like things like a couple bucks. 
quick and easy way to mark out your center is just corner to corner hit an x draw your line you don't want to drill into your table so i'm using two of the dowlings there as a brace And what I've done here, I've taped around my drill bit and that marks out that I don't go past the tape line, the first line. And then I get the exact same depth and I don't go all the way through my plywood piece, my wood piece that I have here. I am using wood glue here, not craft paint, going for the good stuff here. You do wanna glue up both ends. And you definitely want to use some wood glue on this one. It's going to hold it a lot better. This stuff's pretty amazing. Now we're going to grab our, our first top piece. We have our additional holes to match up here. Now you want to put a healthy amount of glue down here and you just, uh, you saw my hand twitch. I'm getting into it. Oh yes. Just going with the hand. I love glue and all things sticky. Have you ever done any finger painting? It's something that definitely needs to happen. So I definitely am an avid finger painter. As you can quite tell, I'm not worried about going in. Anything could be washed. So we're going to grab a great amount of glue here and you do want to drill up a little bit into this piece to help secure it too. Once you've overlapped them together, I forgot to show that on here, but I did put another little screw up into that one to hold that one in place. I have some quarter of an inch plywood here. Cut out these two pieces and I'm going to make them as a two piece and the back piece because I'd like to paint some mountains on this. Some rolling hills of Alberta. So we're going to hit those up now. I The measurements weren't quite exact so I went up using hot glue which had helped fill in some of my not complete straightness in my thing. So you can easily paint over hot glue. If you decide to use silicone with this, you can't really paint over it. The paint would split, so hot glue is your friend. And see, this one doesn't quite fit in there perfectly straight. So I just use hot glue to fill the gap, and that wasn't a, a problem whatsoever. So I made sure it was flush on one side. And then I hot glued the dickens out of it on the on the inside because you're not going to see that. I'm going to put hot glue on that and I'm going to paint right over it. We're going to have the mountains painted there so you won't even notice. Now she's all ready in my yard. I just got some flat black spray paint i didn't do shiny you can use shiny if you'd like you use whatever color that you like but i decided i want to paint some layers on this so i add a little darkness to it make sure you paint everywhere every possible nook and cranny you can think of so started painting the first layer of all my mountains there's one of my pictures that I took. This is about Lake Louise in Alberta, Canada. I'm gonna start, I chart off with some mint green. So now I'm gonna mix in some white with the mint green. And I'm gonna progress my colors as I'm heading down the hills. Oh, I love the mountains. We have mountains to rolling hills, to rainforest, to boreal forests. We have deserts here. We have tundra here. Our, our country has every single terrain there. I think New Zealand might be the only other place in the world that has every terrain. And Canada is one of them as well. We just live in a really cool climate to have uh, everything. I don't, don't think we have tropical, but we have rainforest. We don't have tropical forest, but we have the rain. So that's cool that way. So at least we got something sweet. 
So as I paint my my mountain scenery, my woodland, my rolling hills here, I'm putting an intention. I'm putting intention of what heals me and what heals me is the mountains, my land, the nature around me. It creates such a vibration of awesomeness within me that I, I feel that I just feel rejuvenated every time I hit the mountains. So I think of everything that makes me feel wonderful when I think of that and I put that into my art. Next up is my candle, my LED candle. I like to use some birch bark around this because it, it only glows to a certain point anyway. So I thought if it covers up, it doesn't matter, but it is kind of hiding a little bit of the glow. So. I thought it would look cool. We have a lot of birch trees here around from where I'm from and they are pretty nostalgic for me as well. So I thought I'd make it look like it's a bit of a birch tree inside my little magical lantern. Trimming off the excess here, I'm going to just simply use some hot glue to help secure it into place. So easy as pie. They were going to put some hot glue on it. I trimmed it off to size. I was thinking about leaving a kind of a curly flap on it, but then I changed my mind. And then I'm going to trim off the bottom so it'll sit nice on the lantern. Okay, so I've also done some stars on the top of my lantern. I just flicked some white paint here too. I've glued down some Mod Podge, wrapped that on, and I've chopped up some little pieces of moss to add to my grassy hills, my rolling hills. You've seen in previous videos of mine when I've done my dioramas of grass, I've just used uh, chopped up chopped up uh, moss and it works out absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to mark off here where my candle is going to go. That way I don't over glue any moss. I like this to have a solid area to sit on. Grabbing some everyday craft moss. This is plant moss or craft moss. Any colors that you'd like. I'm just building up the, the greenery. And the best thing to do is just hot glue it down. With the larger moss usage, just hot glue the heck out of it. It makes it easier. You can modge podge the smaller when you have smaller chunks. It's okay, but it tends to flake off a little bit. So get down with the hot glue for sure. Now I'm going to add some fairy lights because I love adding fairy lights to everything. It looks so cool. Now, 
it's easier to kind of hide it in the back. I was thinking about putting some lights up top and I never did. I wound up doing that in a surprise project you may see at the end of this video. So I did do something a little different. If you stay to the end, you're going to see something else that I did with this lantern. So that's kind of a cool way to hide it. Just lay down some moss on top of that. And now I need to hide my cord. So I just figure eight bunch that up and I'm going to use some hot glue or you could use some little pipe cleaner or something or a little wire to help bind this to help secure it into one place. So now we need to hide that. I'm going to add some moss to my little piece that I used to help secure that. So that'll hide. So I can take this apart if I wanted to as well. I like things that are more interactive. So I decided to wrap the candle and you'll see what I did to the lantern at the end of this video. So I did something a little different with the fairy lights. But in this segment we have this portion. Oh wait till you see. So I'm using some quartz crystals here and gluing them in, in bits of threes. apologizing to them as I'm hot gluing them down. It must hurt their little heinies. And I'm squeezing in fairy lights in between them because I discovered that the little lights would, are, even though these are more of a frosted quartz, they're not a clear quartz, they actually still lit up on their own. So I was well chuffed with that. So. I decided to embrace for every single section I, I lit it up. I lit up the crystals. Oh. And then to hide all the wire that I put down, I added more moss. And if there's any hot glue drips or any hot glue bunches, you could also put more moss over top of that to, to hide on in amongst the crystals. And I wound up adding a little bit more moss into the back there. See, it was a little, uh, little lifeless. I added a little bit of hot glue to help secure the lights into place. Now, I went with a green, not sure why here, when I first did the lantern. I, it was like a, I, I think I just love this metallic green so much, I just wanted to use it versus an aqua would have just been better. But I use an aqua or a, a green to aqua to uh, royal blue. So I wound up using the colors I did in the lantern too, but rocked in some green. It was late. I love the color. I put it in. Green is for healing. It's for growth. It's for mental health. It works out for many correspondences. Did some dry brushing throughout this. And then now this is where I started bringing in the aquamarine. I mix it in with the green and then we did some some aqua blues some straight up. These are all metallics blending them as I go and then did a deep royal blue. And at the base, I painted a green around the finishing where I routed out the piece. Gave it that nice little feature. And then something happened.
So here's my final, finally art project. I wound up repainting and having to redo an entire project and rebuild an entire lantern. Get new lights, but I wound up doing fairy lights for the night sky it was suggested by a friend of mine. After I was absolutely devastated losing the lantern, it was still rewarding. I was able to build another one in time to release this video. Thank you so very much for enjoying this Art Witch collaboration. And have yourself an absolutely artistically magical day.